cheaper, healthier. Um, basic waffle recipe isn't really very complicated or uh, take that much time to do. Many times in the stores, what you're buying in waffle mix are um, the dry ingredients that have already been assembled and also some source of fat. Uh, many times in the past, they've used um, hydrogenated fats um, to add that into the mix, which um, is a source of trans fats in the diet. So we've really moved away from that source of fat. Um, but if you're making it yourself, it's more likely to even be a little bit healthier because you're adding the fat that um, may be fresher than fat that's been stored for a long time in those containers with mixes. Uh, this particular recipe we're making, it will be a fun one for the holidays. It's uh, gingerbread waffles. And the original recipe calls for a fourth a cup of butter. Um, it has more sugar than most waffle recipes. So it has a half a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of molasses. So this is more of a dessert waffle than what you might make for your typical breakfast. Um, and then it has eggs, milk, some flour, and a few spices. I think it would be a nice holiday treat for your family. And your kids can have fun making this as well. So in the original recipe, it calls for a fourth a cup of butter. Um, butter is a source of saturated fat. And the canola oil is a little bit healthier for you because um, of the type of fats that are in it. So I'm going to use um, some of the canola oil instead. I just use a little bit less because uh, canola oil is a little bit more, oil, more fat in it than straight butter. So we use a little under a fourth of a cup of the oil. Next we're going to add the um, brown sugar and the molasses which the recipe calls for. So it calls for a half a cup of brown sugar and then brown sugar you're going to pack um, to measure it correctly. You don't have to get exact. About a half a cup and then we have a half a cup of molasses. Uh, let's see if we can get this to open. Molasses gets sticky, so sometimes it's a little bit harder to open if your hands are wet. Um, so about a half a cup of the molasses. This is also the, the ingredient that many times in gingerbread cookies makes the, the flavor of the gingerbread. Um, and then many times on the sugar in the, in the recipe. Um, for cakes and cookies, it's more critical to get the exact amount. In waffles, you don't need to use maybe the, all of the sugar that it calls for. It depends what you want it to taste like. The main point of the sugar is it's not going to um, make a softer, softer waffle. It has a finer texture, more like a cookie. So after you do the molasses and the butter, then we're going to um, mix this together to get the sugar combined before we add our eggs. So we're just mixing the sugar with the canola oil. And it does the same thing as if you had melted butter. Okay. And so you get that mixed around. And now we're going to do the eggs. This particular recipe calls for two well-beaten eggs, but many times in a waffle recipe, it's asked that you divide the eggs and you reserve the egg whites to whip and add at the end of the um, mixing so that you add more um, air into the waffles. You whip the eggs, because when you want them beaten so that they're uniform, the, the yolk acts as an emulsifier with the white, which is protein, uh, to make it more consistent and spread that throughout the eggs. And then that's one thing that's going to hold um, the liquid and the fat and the sugar together in your recipe. All right, so we add that. We're going to mix this up so that it's a uniform consistency. And this isn't a point that if you wanted to add um, some type of uh, fruit that you've 
sm mashed bananas or um, what I'm going to put in this recipe because it is a fall recipe and winter recipe is some pumpkin. So just about a fourth of a cup of pumpkin I'm going to add to this recipe. And that will add a little more fiber, a little more nutrients. Um, many times you can reduce the sugar by adding extra fiber because um, it helps also to keep the um, texture from being too tough. All right, so we get that mixed up. And now it's time to add the dry ingredients, which is really just flour and then the spices and a little bit of baking powder. So you add that at the end. So we're going to use two cups of flour. You don't have to be perfect on this. Um, then we're going to add in a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm just going to shake a little in there, half a teaspoon, and a little ginger. Ginger's a strong spice, so you, you don't want to overdo that. So a fourth of a teaspoon of ginger. All right. Let's see how this goes. Slowly mix that in. And while we're mixing that in, we're going to add the um, rest of the liquid ingredients with that. So it's about a cup of milk. You kind of want to watch your um, when you're adding the milk to try to get it the right consistency. So if you add about half and kind of see what your consistency is like, you don't want it too runny. So this is going to be the rest of it. So we add the rest. And same thing if you're making pancakes, you kind of add the water and the milk at the end to get the consistency you want for your waffles or pancakes. A lot of times it's hard to tell how much water gets absorbed depending on the flour that you're using. So that's why it's, it's a little bit more of an art when you're making breads or even waffles or pancakes. All right, and it looks like the perfect consistency for a waffle. All right, okay. And we've heated our waffle iron. There's lots of different waffle irons out there. Um, this is a really just an in inexpensive um, waffle iron that you can purchase at the store. It's a nice size because it has um, more of the standard size you'd have for a waffle. So normally when you're looking, um, if you have diabetes or you're trying to manage your carbohydrates, one waffle square that's uh, about the, the size of a slice of bread would be the equivalent of having a piece of uh, uh, one carbohydrate or uh, one slice of bread or one ounce of grains at the meal. This recipe has more sugar in it than other waffle recipes. So just to maybe prevent it, the mix from sticking to the sides of the waffle iron, I am going to spray it with a, a non-stick non, uh, spray. And that'll kind of help. Then what you're going to do is you're going to measure usually about a fourth of a cup, maybe a little third of a cup. Um, but it should cover about the center of the waffle ma ma maker. Um, so it's about that high, and then you're going to bring it down, and then you're going to wait, and um, you'll see it after a few minutes, probably about four to five minutes, maybe three to five minutes, it'll, um, steam will start coming out of the sides of the waffle maker, and that's usually how you can tell it's just about done. And it shouldn't be sticking, so if you lift it up in this process, it, it'll stick to both sides and it'll be more difficult, but um, when the steam starts to come out, it's a sign that it's done. And then when you lift it up, it should gently pull away from, this, from the um, sides of the waffle maker. And this looks like it's steaming pretty well. That's kind of what you want to see coming out of your waffle iron. That would be normal. So we'll get our fork and we'll see what's looking like in there. Let's see that. There we go. So when it's 
that's really, it should be uh, golden brown, and it should have pulled easily away from your, your uh, waffle maker. And the longer you leave it in there, the crispier the waffle is going to get. So depending on your family's preferences, if you like crispy waffles, then you'd leave it in there a little longer. If you like a softer waffle, then you would take it out now. So once the waffles are made, another idea that you can do for your family, because this is kind of a fun thing in my own family on our weekends, many times we'll have waffles for breakfast on Saturday, and we'll have, um, you know, eat, people will eat so many waffles and you have extra mix. The easiest thing to do is really continue making the waffles until the mix is done, and then using Ziploc uh, storage bags or some sort of storage, plastic storage bag, that you can um, seal the waffles in and you put them in the freezer. And it's basically like a frozen waffle that you would buy at the store, but it's going to cost much, much less and it's going to be healthier for you because it's, this was made with a whole grain flour as well as um, the pumpkin. And if you made it added nuts, there's other things you've added to your waffles that aren't really used in the store frozen waffles. And this is a fun holiday thing, but you could get by with a lot less sugar.